water sets also depend on how large of an area that you want to focus on. This could cause ambiguity in locating or finding a specific one, but even though that's the case, I like to think about it like your home address and telling people where you live depending on where they are in the world and how far they are from you. Despite that, I'm going to name a couple top water tracks in their national level. Let's start off with the Mississippi water track with 1,260,000 square miles covering over 10 states. Let's now separate the U.S. into regions West, Midwest, Southwest, Southeast, and Northeast. For the West, we have the Pacific Northwest watershed, omitting Alaska and Hawaii with 302,334 square miles in area. For the Southwest, there's the Texas Gulf, which is mostly in the region which covers 181,886 square miles. In the Southeast, East, it is the South Atlantic Gulf covering 279,664 square miles. In the Midwest, the one that is fully in this region is the Upper Mississippi with 189,968 square miles. And finally, in the Northeast or the smallest region, there is the New England covering only 73,753 square miles. This can go on and on, but don't compute a water set with an aquifer. A water set is above ground and marked by geological barriers, but an aquifer has no barriers and it's below ground. Essentially, one aquifer can give water to multiple water sets, but one water set only has one aquifer to supply it. Before I get into what happens at the ground level of things, let's talk about what is a stream. Streams are water rates Ways that help join the innermost parts of the land out to the sea. Okay, let's start with what's called a swell. A swell is a natural narrow depression in the soil that essentially runoff water can easily travel to, a, to lead to a more permanent wider waterway. And that wider waterway would be a brook creek or a tributary. Either of these three words are acceptable depending on who you are talking to. Let's abbreviate them. B C T from here on out. B C T's are small streams. You can think of them as the tricks of a tree branch. If that represents the tricks, then what represents the branches? That would be a commonly recognized river, which is a long stream. Just like multiple tricks are on a branch, so too multiple BCTs flow to a river. After that, you can have one or two bigger rivers flowing into each other before going out to sea. The term for the arrangement of waterways under sites ranking is called stream order. In my area, which is the northeast, Examples of large streams include the Satchquehanna River, Connecticut River, Kokotak River, and lastly the Pacific River. The lengths of each in order are as follows 464 miles, 406 miles, 34 miles, and 80 miles. One of the noticeable features in an entire watershed is that they tend to 
have bigger rocks or boulders near the beginning and release small particles like seals or clays near the end. This is because as the water flows through the stream, it can create turbulent movements through the rocks or materials, grinding them down in the process. Another prominent feature are the plants and animals that live there. Since rivers and streams are somewhat fast moving and unpredictable, so too are the life living in them, having to adapt quickly to various conditions in a short time span. For plant examples, it's algae, tall grasses, cattails, floating plants such as water lilies and duckweed and some water hungry trees. For example, they could be small like macro invertebrates, water indicators, or amphibians like frogs, turtles, and salamanders, to large organisms like freshwater fish like trout or bats, to mammals like river otters, birds, and much grass. Lastly, if you look at a water set from an overhead sky view through time, it will slowly change shape. At least at the bottom half, I'll leave you with this. Every motion has to eventually stop sit somewhere. And that is the landed system, which we will explore next time.